Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video, we're talking all about what the internet is referring to as design X and cursed design mistakes. Now, the first cursed or ick design mistake I have to share with you that I do not like is a bath mat in a powder room because that doesn't make sense. Is it a bathroom? Or is it a powder room? Because a bath mat goes in a bathroom where you have a bath, where you are bathing. But you don't do that in a powder room because it's not a bathroom. There's no bath in it. So why would you have a bath mat in a powder room? Do you see where I'm going with this? Doesn't make any sense to me. Bath mats are there to, to be like a soft thing for you to step on when you are wet so that you do not slip on the tile in the bathroom or whatever flooring you have in your bathroom. I hope it's not carpet, but that's a topic of conversation for another video. You don't need to have a bath mat in a powder room because it, there's no purpose for it, right? Like you're not getting out of the bath, you're not wet, you're not standing there, you're just, you know, washing your hands or using the restroom. That's, that's what a powder room is for. I guess a powder room is for, you know, things that involve powder as well, but that's not what this channel is about or what we're talking about. So we're gonna leave that where it is. Bath mats go in bath rooms. And if you're not using your powder room for bathing, which is not what it's there for, you don't need to have a bath mat. Actually, I'd go as far as to say, unless you have overnight guests, you don't need to have a bath mat in a full bathroom that you're using as a powder bathroom. You know, some houses just don't have a private powder bathroom, right? Like maybe you have one bathroom and you know, guests and everybody that lives there are sharing it. If you're in that situation where guests are coming in and using that, close the curtain for the tub, for the shower, whatever, take up the bath mat because you don't need it and just have the space feeling fresh and clean. I think that's good enough. At the same time, you might wanna have a rug in your powder bathroom, which is a completely different topic of conversation and I think is appropriate as long as you don't also have like wall-to-wall -wall carpet everywhere in your house. Like you don't need to go from the carpet to the tile to a rug. That, that also doesn't make sense to me unless you're looking for that one element to tie everything together. You could find a small, you know, vintage wool rug moment that could be really cute in a little powder bathroom but you do not need to have a bath mat because there's no bath in a powder room powder rooms are not for bathing you see what i mean it's a design ick. It, it it's cursed i have no clue why somebody would do this but people do it you all know somebody that probably does and that's it for me the excuses to keep their feet warm and i don't accept excuses when it comes to interior design. Honey, if your feet are that cold, you need to turn on the heat and put on some slippers, put on some socks and have a nice day because we don't need to have a bath mat in a powder room, okay? <laughs> now, no matter what your situation is, whether it's a full bathroom, a powder bathroom, any area in your home, be it a bathroom, a kitchen, a living dining room, bedroom, I am at your service. You can always book a consultation with me to discuss all of your design and decorating needs using the link in the description box down below or going to intro.co slash Garrett Lachique. The next cursed design mistake, the ick I do not like is a thin curtain rod. And you know, it's kind of a trend right now. I personally like a, a thicker curtain rod because I think it's more substantial. It just has a little bit more of that accent, that pop, that metallic moment. But thin drapery rods are very in right now. I think that's great. I think it's cool, it looks good. But you cannot get a cheap one, okay? You, you can be a lot of things, but being cheap is not one of those things. If you get a cheap, thin drapery rod, it will sag in the middle, especially if you have a large window and that does not look good. You could spend an arm and a leg on custom drapes and an expensive curtain rod that's just not good quality and it will look cheap because if it's bent in the middle, if it just doesn't look good, I, I'm looking, oh, I can't even deal with this right now what I'm seeing. We'll talk about that in another video, but I don't like a thin, cheap, curtain rod. I think it's an ick. I think it is cursed because, it, and actually I think that's a really good definition of like a cursed design moment because you could do something really, really expensive and it'll still look super cheap and just not good to have a bent curtain rod. That, you know what I mean? It's too thin for the weight of the drapes. It's bending in the middle. You can't actually use it. Does not look good. You want a space to have equal quality throughout. You know what I mean? It doesn't always have to be like top tier, the most expensive of expensive everything, but it needs to at least be able to do what it's supposed to do. The drapery rod needs to hold up the drapes. You need to be able to slide them across without it bending in the middle because that does not look good. It looks crazy. We need to have 
nice drapes. I think that's one of the things that is like the moment in the space that makes a space feel so beautiful and welcoming, warm, luxurious are the drapes and the drapery hardware is essential to that. So having a good drapery hardware moment is essential in a home. Otherwise, you might as well be one of the girlies with no drapes at all, no window treatments, just put it all on display because it's better than looking at something that just does not look good. But if you don't have any window treatments, honey, we might be looking at something that doesn't look good. I don't know about that. That's beside the point. The entire takeaway is don't have cheap drapery rods. Don't get them that are so thin that they will bend in the middle. If you have a really large window to go across, get something that's a little more substantial and has less likelihood of bending in the middle. Or if you do like that thin drapery look, you may even find a wooden dowel instead of a telescoping drapery rod is a better option because they're a little bit more substantial. I may not like a cheap drapery rod or a design ick, a cursed interior design moment, but what I do like and I love is all of you at home. So be sure if you haven't already, you take a moment, hit that subscribe button, join us, become a part of the Le Chic family. Give this video a like. It helps content creators out like me a lot and costs you absolutely nothing. Unhinged Garrett is back. And we love that for us because all of you enjoy these videos. So be sure you comment down below and share with me what are some of the cursed interior design mistakes that you don't like seeing and what are some of your design icks that you see all of the time that you just cannot stand. One of those for me, you already know what I'm gonna say, are frilly pillows and blankets. I don't like it. It doesn't look good. It looks like an ick to me because it doesn't look like it came from a home decor store. It doesn't look like it was thought out. It looks like it came from the college dormitory special section at the department store. And I'm not talking about department store at the mall that has nice things. I'm talking about the place you get your groceries and your milk from. Home decor does not need to come from every single store. Okay, there are just some places that, that don't need to have it and we just don't need to buy it from them. These are some of those places. Every once in a while, you find a gem, okay? I'm gonna be honest with you. But the frilly pillows and blankets and all of that, the artwork is not the vibe. And I don't wanna be like putting down the college dormitory you know, aesthetic or whatever that is because I think it's good for a college dormitory and I do kind of like those sections of the store because they have very cohesive organizational things. I think that's a good situation, but the pillows, the blankets, we don't need to have them in a mature, sophisticated, beautiful, elegant living room. I would rather see you find a really cool, special one-off pattern or fabric made of natural materials that really stands out, has a gorgeous moment and element, that pattern that incorporates all of the colors in your space together instead of it just being like a frilly, fuzzy little pillow with ruffles on it because it doesn't look good. It doesn't look comfortable. It doesn't look luxurious. It doesn't even look like it's down alternative. It looks like it's polyester filled to me and that does not scream comfort. So you want to really think about what message you're sending with those accents, those accessories, those soft furnishings. You want them to be comfortable and useful, not just be like fuzzy and frilly and fluffy. Like there was a moment for that with boho design, but even that was more like a shaggy moment than it was frilly and fuzzy. I think we need to leave this for the college dormitories, for the girlies that are looking for the pillow that's $12. We can get something that's a little bit more elevated for our homes, and I think that's great. Let's be real. I'm sure there are some of these pillows out there that are gorgeous, that are beautiful, that are expensive. I don't like them. I don't need them in my house. I don't even need to have like a sham with that kind of edge on it. I'm good with just like a pillow that's piped or even just, you know, has a sharp crisp corner on it. I think that's good enough. The extra frills, the fluffiness, the fuzziness, it may not be adding what we think it is to a space. So let's just not even go in that direction. Get something that's elevated for that accent, that accessory moment, just like you would with your personal style. The accessories can be that fun moment that make your outfit pop and stand out together. Actually, I was called a fashion icon the other day by a fashion designer thanks to my accessories. You can pull a look together, you can pull your space together with them. So be on the lookout for some that are adding something interesting in a layer, not just something fuzzy, frilly, and fluffy because you may not actually need that. Let's talk about another cursed design moment. That was an ick, this is a cursed moment. The cursed moment for me in a home is a welcome home sign because I do not need to welcome myself into my home. Me having a welcome home sign in my own home 
is, is like, I might as well have a mirror and talk to myself as soon as I come through the door. I don't need to send a message to myself because the message I'm sending to myself is that I am the message. You see what I mean? Doesn't make any sense. I don't like a welcome home sign in a personal home because the welcome home I'm getting is the mail in the mailbox, the bill that's coming that I'm signing the check for. That's the welcome home I need. When I see my name on the deed, honey, when I see my name on the mortgage and the rent check, whatever, that's the welcome home I'm getting. I don't need a sign to tell me that. The other thing I have to say is that a welcome home sign it could be cute. Where they belong, let's just say that, is an Airbnb, is you know a rental, is a hotel, somewhere you don't live, because it's like, oh, a cute moment, like, oh, it's an Airbnb, I'm checking in, oh, welcome home, that's sweet, that's fun, that's kind, that's cute, I like that, but I don't need to see it in my own house. You all know me, I don't really like word signs in my decor. I don't need to have a pillow that says something. I don't need to have a word sign. I don't need everything to have a quote or an inspirational moment. I'm a Scorpio, okay? It's not gonna work for me, but that's beside the point. Actually, it's Scorpio season, so I love that for all of us. Me and Cornelius are both Scorpios. But I don't like literal decor. If you have to say that it is something, if you need a pillow that says pillow, if you need a sign that says kitchen, like I know where the kitchen is, we don't need that in the house, so I don't need to be welcome homed into my own home either. I welcome myself in by putting my own key into the door and turning it in the lock. Okay, actually I have an automatic lock so I just type the code in, but that's also not the point. We don't need welcome home signs in our own home unless that's something you need. You need to be welcome homed, but the people in my house are gonna welcome me home. I don't need a sign to do that. That's why I think it's cursed. I don't, I just don't get it. It's like, it's kind of like when you have two mirrors across from each other and then it's just like an endless hallway of mirrors. That's what it's giving me. Like I'm welcoming myself into my own home I don't get it. It's cursed. I don't like that. I don't need it. I don't think you do either. But if you have a welcome home sign, honey, welcome. I love that for you. <laughs> the next thing we have to talk about is, is this a cursed design or is it an ick? Let me think. It's a little bit of both. I'm going to go with an ick. The ick we are talking about now are lace curtains. Honestly, it's just lace in a house. Lace is gorgeous for a vintage wedding dress. Lace is gorgeous if you're like, you know, that kind of like cute little girly, you like the crop top, get a lace one. Oh, love that for you. Love that fantasy for you. Maybe not the visual for all of us, but that's also not the point. I don't think you need to have lace drapes, curtains, doilies in your house. I don't like that. I don't think it's necessary. Alexis Carrington Colby would not have lace in her home. And I think that's something we can all strive to live by. <laughs> Listen, I think lace has a time and a place and I appreciate the art, the craftsmanship that goes into creating handmade lace. And I think it's beautiful, but I just don't think it needs to be in a house. Even like you could sit there and be like, it's granny. My grandmother would never, she wouldn't have lace curtains or drapes. She would not have a lace frilly detail here or there. She's not gonna put doilies on the back of a chair. Not necessary, not needed. I love the fantasy of that for other people, but I just am not, don't, don't bring a doily into my space because it's gonna go straight into a drawer and then when you leave, it's gonna go into the trash. I just don't know what to say other than that. Just don't bring a doily into my presence or into my space. I don't think it's necessary. I'm not gonna put one under a lamp. I'm not gonna put one on the back of a chair. What is the point of the doily? If you know, share with me. Cause for me, it's giving me like, oh, put your plate on here on the table so you don't scratch up the wood surface. That's the, that's the vibe it's giving me, but I don't know if that's actually the purpose. What is the purpose? What is the point of a lace doily? I just don't think we need that stuff in our house. I think it's a little dated. Maybe it's not a little dated. Maybe it's a lot dated. If you have some of these though, what could be very cute, if you know it's like, oh, my grandmother had these, she made it or whatever, frame it. That could be so cute to see it framed there. And I'm like, is that a lace doily? And you're like, my grandmother made that. I'm like, oh, that's so sweet. Now my opinion of it has changed. And I like that. I like to have my, ch my perspective challenged. And that's how you're gonna do it, but not by having it on the back of a chair. Okay, I might tell you it's cute, but that is just because I am a kind and supportive person. I'm not trying to be calling everybody out unnecessarily, but you don't need to have this. It's not giving the fantasy we think it is. You want a crocheted blanket on the back of the sofa? That's cute. My grandmother used to crochet. She loved that, but she was never gonna have a doily on the table. Okay, we don't need that fantasy. We can elevate it a little bit. And I also think that if you have too much of a lace moment in your home, it's just overwhelming. It's just too much. A Victorian vintage lace gown, like that's cute. You could wear that. I actually follow a lot of like fashion influencers that love that stuff and it looks very modern and chic, but is it chic in a home? I just don't think so. I haven't seen it done really, really well. So maybe you have it in your house and it is done well. Share with us how you did it. 
so we can all get the fantasy, we can all change our perspective on a lace moment in a home. The lace fantasy for most of us is pretty dated, but let's talk about how you can decorate your home without making any dated decorating design mistakes by checking out this video right over here and I will see you over there.